this video, we're going to look at the leprechaun giving you a magic penny problem. And basically what happens is this. A leprechaun gives you a magic penny. After the first night, the magic penny became two pennies. The morning after that, you now find four pennies. And this process continues where you find twice as many pennies each morning as what you had the day before. So we have four questions we want to answer here. Uh, the first question says, how many pennies do you find on the 10th morning? Now I'm going to use a TI-84 for this. We're going to look at a graphing approach. You could use natural logs here, but uh, I'm just going to show you on a graph. So let's go ahead and go to Y equals. And for this function, we can model this function by using 2 to the X power. Now let me explain why this is going to work. And to show you this, I'm going to go to the table. So if we press second and graph, and I'm going to come to where X is zero. So let's think of X as the number of days. And at the very beginning, that leprechaun gives you one magic penny. So at the very beginning, think of this as day zero, you have one penny. After that first night, that first morning, so think of this right here, when X is one, that represents that first morning. Well, it doubled. That one penny became two pennies. The following morning after that, you now find four pennies, and this process is going to continue. So notice, you're going to find twice as many pennies each morning as you had the day before. So notice here, we have one, it doubles to two, two doubles to four, four doubles to eight, then it doubles to 16, and it keeps on going. So if we scroll on down to the 10th day, we can get the answer to our first question. How many pennies do you have on the 10th morning? 1,024 pennies. And I'm just going to quit out of this table real quick. And again, that formula is just 2 to the power of whatever day you're trying to find. For example, 2 to the 10th, we have 1,024 pennies. That's the answer to number 1. So that answer is 1,024 pennies. Now, how much money do you have on the 20th morning? Well, let's take 2 and raise it to the 20th power. This will tell you how many pennies you have. It doesn't tell you how much money you have. And again, if we did go to the table and we just scroll to the 20th morning, we will see that exact same number. And actually, it's in scientific notation, maybe on your Y column. But if I scroll over to it, we do see... 1,048,576 pennies. That's a lot of pennies. But the question says, how much money do you have? So we take that many pennies and we multiply it by the value of a penny, which is one cent, and we have $10,485.76. So $10,485.76 after just 20 days. Now, how many days will it take you to have $1 million? Well, to answer that question, first of all, we need to figure out how many pennies it's going to take to have a $1 million. A whole bunch of pennies, right? So let's take a million bucks. That's going to be a one with six zeros. And let's divide that by the value of a penny. And when we do that, we're going to get a lot of pennies. As a matter of fact, it will take 100 million pennies to have $1 million. Now, the reason why I wanted to figure out how many pennies it would take to make a million bucks, remember this Y equals formula that we put in? This is telling us how many pennies we have. So now that we know that we need 100 million pennies, I'm going to put that in Y2. And that is going to be a 1 followed by 8 zeros. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to graph it. I'm going to look at the graph of both this blue curve and this red curve. And if we go to zoom and six, that's the zoom standard. This is the blue curve, but we don't see the red curve because, well, we're talking about a huge number, 100 million. So a way that I can see the 100 million curve, I'm looking for a red line going straight across here. I'm going to go to my window and I'm just going to set my Y max to something higher than 100 million. For example, I'll just type in 150 million. And I'm going to press graph, and now we're going to see the red curve. We see the blue one down here, but now we don't see where they intersect. As a matter of fact, this blue curve looks like a horizontal line, but we did see where it was curving up a moment ago. So something that we can do here is we need to adjust the number of days. Right now, the X value, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 little tick marks over here. It's going to take longer than 10 days to have a million dollars. So we need to adjust our X max. I'm going to go over to the table, and I'm just going to look at some things. 
the y1 is that exponential curve, 2 to the x, and then this y2 is 1 times 10 to the 8th. That's what that 1e8 means. And uh, basically, I'm just going to scroll down through here, and I'm going to see where these numbers start to appear to match. And right around day number you know, 27, check out day 27, we have a whole bunch of pennies, and it's starting to look very similar to this number over here. A little giveaway here is I was looking for the e to the 8th on both of these. So right around day 27 um, is when we're going to have a million bucks. But to show you that even further, I'm going to go back to my window and I'm going to set my x max to 30 days. Now when we press graph, notice we do see the blue curve and we see the red curve. And as a matter of fact, what we're curious about is that intersection point right there. So to find the intersection, we go to second trace, number 5. And basically, uh, you don't even have to move the cursor, but you do see this cursor moving. But I'm just going to get it over here close, and I'm going to press Enter on the first curve, press Enter on the second curve, and then press Enter on Guess. And it takes roughly, uh, it says 26.5 days. Let's go ahead and say right around 27 days is when we'll have a million dollars. So approximately 27 days. That's how long it'll take you to have a million bucks starting off with just a single magic penny. Not bad, huh? And now finally, this last problem here. If the distance from the Earth to the Moon is 3.85 times 10 to the fifth kilometers, and a penny is approximately 1.5 millimeters thick, how many pennies would you need to stack on each other to reach the Moon? Now this is fairly accurate information. Uh, roughly the Moon is right around that distance from the Earth, and a penny is right around 1.5 millimeters thick. It's going to take a whole bunch of pennies to stack on top of each other. And we're trying to figure out how many pennies would you need in order to do this. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to add another question here too. You know, how many pennies are we going to need? And then how many days will it take you to have this many pennies? Well, we need to be careful here because uh, we have two different units of measurement. We have kilometers and we have millimeters. The first thing we need to do is either convert kilometers to millimeters or convert millimeters to kilometers. We need to get these in the same unit of measurement. Now I do have videos on converting the metric system and I'm going to give you a brief overview of that. Uh, an acronym is King Henry Drinks Ucky Dark Chocolate Milk and this M over here stands for our millimeter in this case and the K stands for kilometer. So we had that penny's thickness of 1.5 millimeters, and I want to convert this to kilometers. Well, what we're going to do here, since we have millimeters, we're going to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places to the left. We want to move our decimal 6 places to the left. So this decimal in 1.5, if we move it 6 places to the left, we're going to have to add 5 additional zeros here. So there's 3, 4... Five, and then I'm going to put my 1.5 right there. 1.5 millimeters is this decimal kilometers. Now let me show you how that's going to look in the calculator. If I do five zeros, three, four, five, and then do the 1.5, if I press enter on that, the calculator is probably going to convert it to scientific notation. This scientific notation is the same thing as 1.5 times 10 to the negative 6 power. The negative means we're going to move our decimal to the left, and notice if I press enter, I get the exact same number. Well, this is very beneficial because if we go back and look at our problem now, the distance from the Earth to the Moon is also given in scientific notation. Now remember, one penny was this thick. Now this is in kilometers, and we have our distance to the Moon in kilometers as well. So what we want to do is we want to take the distance from the Earth to the Moon, and I'm going to use the fraction button here. I'm going to put my scientific notation 3.85 times 10 to the fifth. That's the total distance from the Earth to the Moon. And I'm going to divide that up into these individual thicknesses of a single penny. So I'm going to divide it by 1.5 times 10 to the negative 6 power. And when we do this, we get a very big number. This is 2.5, a bunch of sixes getting repeated times 10 to the 11th power. That's a positive 11. It's going to take a whole bunch of pennies. This 10 to the 11th power, that means we take this decimal and we move it 11 places to the right. That positive 11, 11 places to the right. So we're talking about two, and then this five counts as one spot. That means we need 10 more sixes. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This number right here is pretty much the same thing as 2.56 repeated times 10 to the 11th. And if I press enter on this, notice it gives me pretty much that exact same thing. That's how many pennies we're going to need. So instead of me putting that answer over here, there is the number of pennies that we will need to reach the moon if we were to stack each penny on top of itself. Now this last question says, how many days will it take you to have this many pennies? That's a bunch of pennies, but uh, you may think it would take forever to get that many pennies with this magic penny the leprechaun gave you, but it actually will not take that long. So I'm clearing out Y2, and I'm going to type in 2, 5, and I'm going to do 10 of these 6s. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is the number of pennies that we will need to stack on top of each other from the earth to reach the moon. Now if I graph this, we're not going to see the red line again because we need to go to our window and change our Y max. And since it was what, 2, 5, and then we had 10 6s, I'm just going to set this to uh, 3, and then I'm going to add 11 zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now if we press graph, we're probably still not going to see the intersection because it's going to take longer than the number of days I have currently set up. My X max, let's just bump it on up to, say, 100 days. And now if we press graph, we definitely see an intersection here, and it's not going to take even 100 days for us to reach the moon with this many pennies. We can find our answer by doing the intersection again. So second trace, doing the intersection, and pressing enter three times. It'll take roughly 38 days, 37.9. So we're just going to go ahead and say 38 days for us to stack pennies on top of each other and the height of that stack of pennies will be enough to reach from the earth to the moon. Now if you don't have a graphing calculator for this you could find a graphing calculator online maybe Desmos for example. There are other ways of doing it without a graphing calculator. I'll leave that out of this video but if you are familiar with working with natural logs you could solve it that way as well. But uh, this is the quickest approach here and um, yeah there you have it. A leprechaun gives you a magic penny and hopefully you do see here that you could get rich very, very, very quickly. If you have a question, leave a comment below and that's it for this video. I hope it helped.